it is that time again. I am giving my SPFL Scottish Premiership team of the season for the 2023-24 season. Now, I've gone for a traditional 4-3-3 formation. And again, this is just my opinion. This is just what I've been seen and based off performances from teams this season. Comment down below your thoughts. But without further ado, let's get into it. Starting with the goalkeeper, and there's mainly only one man I could choose. It is Jack Butland, the Englishman, came into Rangers at the start of the season, and he's been so pivotal for them. On obviously unlucky for them, they didn't win the league under Philip Clement. He's been brilliant under pff, Philip, um, not Philip Clement, under Michael Beale. He's been quite mid. Philip Clement has made this guy turn this guy into a beast. He's been pivotal for them, especially in big games. I remember watching their game against Benfica, where he made a very, very good couple of saves and kept them in the tie, obviously, unfortunately, losing the second leg. And then in the old firm games, he's been brilliant for them, making very, very instant reaction saves, that's what I would say, and saves that most people would not really think he would save. But Jack Butland, very, very good keeper. Not much keepers I could go for. Roos, nope, terrible season. Joe Hart, mm, no. Jack Butland is my goalkeeper. Getting on to the right back now, and I've gone for James Tavernier. And look, yes, this guy, you may say, oh, Tavernier is a pen merchant. He is a pen merchant. But... I couldn't think of any other right backs to go for. I could go for Alistair Johnson, but he's made too many mistakes for that Celtic team. Um, especially of late, he made some a couple of dodgy decisions in the semi final against Aberdeen. But yes, he is also a very good player. But James Tavernier, you cannot leave him out. I'm sorry, but for a right back, yes, his defensive attributes are not very good. But for a right back, he is, has been unbelievable and pff, look he's got 17 goals in the league I think that's more than I think he's got the same as Boyomiovsky so he's, he's up there for top scorers and it's just incredible that this guy can score that many goals from a right back yes he's not great defensively but attackingly he brings a big asset to that Rangers team and he's very very good at scoring goals and making big decisions Yes, he scores a lot of penalties. And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. But James Tavernier, 17 goals, you can't complain. Now it is my two centre-backs and I've gone for a strong partnership of Celtics' Liam Scales and Kilmarnock's Lewis Mayo. These two have had a brilliant season, especially Liam Scales. First of all, we'll talk about Liam Scales first. Unbelievable season coming back into that Celtic team. Brendan Rodgers believed that he was strong enough to go into that centre-back partnership with Carter Vickers. He's unfortunate not to get in the squad, but I think Lewis Mayo, outstanding this season, um, has just taken the spot ahead of him. Uh, Liam Scales, obviously went out on loan to Aberdeen last season. I think that really helped him with his confidence, his ability and his, well, mentally, mental ability helped him a lot uh, to go into that Celtic team and get minutes pretty much every single game. Liam Skills, he's been very, very solid at the back for Celtic, pretty much guiding them to the league title. Lewis Mayo, he has had a very, very good season. Everyone is pretty much putting this guy in their team of the season. And look, why not? He's had a very good, very, very good and outstanding season for Kilmarnock. Um, he began his career at Rangers, so obviously he started his career on a high path. And then, obviously, Kilmarnock came begging, and he's done brilliant for them. Solid. I haven't really watched him much, but I've seen some of his stats, and he looks very, very good. Lewis Mayo and Liam Scales is my centre-back centre partnership. Left-back and I have gone for Owen Beck, the Dundee lone man. Now, it got off to... Bit of a, I wouldn't say a rough start, but he had he did have a very very good start. In fact, it got off to a bit of a stitch 
because in January, start of January, I think it was the first day of January actually, um, he got recalled from Liverpool and then at the end of the January transfer window went back to Dundee and he's been such a good player for them. I think he's been one of their best players leading Dundee into a top six finish, meaning there'll be a Dundee derby next season. Can't wait to see that. But Owen Beck at left back, more of a left wing back, I realised um, that he's been playing recently. He's been brilliant. He honestly, he's been unbelievable. Dundee fans now love him. They obviously probably want to get him on a permanent transfer. That'll be quite difficult because I think Liverpool have plans with him. And again, he's playing for a very one of the best teams in the country um, at, of Liverpool. So I don't know what Arnie Slot, the new Liverpool manager, is going to do with him. But Dundee will want to get their hands on their star man at left back. And why not? He's been brilliant for Dundee and you can't complain with his performances. Owen Beck is my left back. Let's get on to the midfield. Starting with the first midfielder, and I've gone for one you probably won't see most people go for. I've gone for David Watson of Kilmarnock. Another Kilmarnock player. Again, Kilmarnock have had a very, very... Well, they pretty much overachieved this season. Getting Europe, getting a fourth place spot, and pretty much dominating most teams, especially in the bottom six. And Derek McInnes has turned them into an absolute powerhouse and a force to be reckoned with the next season. But David Watson, a very, very, uh, again, young talent. Um, obviously, he's 19, which says it all. Says it, all. It, it explains everything. Playing with so much confidence, this young man is doing brilliant for Kilmarnock. And... Again, I think he won player of the young player of the year, um, if I'm not correct. And yeah, this guy's been brilliant. Definitely deserves young player of the year. I definitely remember that moment where he scored at Celtic Park against Celtic, which pretty much led Rangers to go top and then obviously bottled it. And yeah, he scored a banger against us, against Aberdeen at Pataudry on a Wednesday night. Oh, that was, that was a heartbreak. And then, again, scored that solo run against St Mirren. That was a brilliant goal. This boy has bright potential and I can see him doing very well in the future. David Watson is my first midfielder. Next midfielder, and I've gone for the man, the myth, the legend, Jamie McGrath. Now, obviously, Aberdeen have had a very, very dull season and a season they probably won't want to remember. But Jamie McGrath has been, for me, an outstanding figure in that team. He's, again, 27. He's Irish. He played for, I think it was Wigan, St Mirren, Dundee United, and then came to Aberdeen. Got there in the end, got the transfer, and he's been brilliant for the Dons this season. So calm, so composed in that midfield. And the goals he has scored have been very, very well taken. And... He's he's honestly, I he's got eleven goals this season for a midfielder. I would take that. He has been brilliant. I think definitely what definitely a midfielder up there. And um, this is not me being biased or anything. I just think Jamie McGrath has had a very very good season for Aberdeen, especially that moment at Ibrox. Pfft, what a moment! I can't believe I I'm still flattered and flabbergasted that I was there on that day to witness that moment. Him knee sliding into the away end was brilliant. Jamie McGrath is my next midfielder. And my final midfielder, and pff, you guessed it, it's Matt O'Reilly of Celtic. Probably one of the best players in the league this season, if not the best. Especially for his position, not many midfielders would win maybe a player of the year. Again, Shankland won it. We'll get onto that later in the video. But Matt O'Reilly, he's had such a good season. I think when he came in, I liked him. I thought he had brilliant, brilliant talent, especially, he, I think he came from MK Dons, was it? Englishman. And yeah, he's had an outstanding, I think he got Celtics Player of the Year, and rightly so, because he's been unbelievable. I think he was linked with a move to Inter Milan, Juventus, for about 20 million back in January. And 
he's price tagged on a football market. He's price tagged at 13 million. Now that is unbelievable. And Celtic have definitely found a force to be reckoned with in their team. Again, you would probably think Kyogo would be the best player this season, not being good enough for Celtic. Maybe it's because of the way Ange played. It doesn't suit the way he plays with Brendan Rodgers. But Matt O'Reilly has really flourished with Brendan Rodgers and really found his form and done brilliantly for them. He He's picked up 19 goals and most of those goals were brilliant finishes. I've watched some of his highlights and when he played Aberdeen, he was a threat. You could barely get the ball off him and he's so calm and composed in that midfield. Matt O'Reilly, probably one of, prob I would say the best midfielder in the team. Let's get on to the strikers. Starting with the first striker position and I've gone for Motherwell's Theo Bear. And pff, most people wouldn't have gone for this guy. Canadian international, 24 years old. He played for, I think he played for St. Johnston last season. I think if I'm not correct, please correct me in the comments. But this guy from Motherwell, what a player. Just what a player. If Motherwell did not have this guy, they're done for, literally. I say relegation playoffs. 15 goals in all competitions is not too shabby. I think he's done unbelievable for Motherwell. Definitely deserves to be up there with um with the, some of the best strikers in the league. And Theo Bear, feed the bear, as Motherwell fans call it. Honestly, some of his finishes, some of his goals are so good. Like, honestly, I think there was one against Livingston. Chip the keeper. Onto the corner, simple as that. And he has so much compo ugh, composure against big teams, especially the old firm. When he played Celtic and Rangers, getting a goal at Ibrox, simple as that. Going up to the away end, scoring against Celtic, easy as that. Yeah, he's, he's such a composed lad for 24 as well. So he's had a brilliant, brilliant season, pretty much playing every single... Well, I wouldn't really say every single minute for Motherwell. But he's definitely been one of their best players, if not their best player. And I wouldn't be surprised if some teams down south are going to be chipping in for him because he's a brilliant player for Motherwell. Definitely up there for one of the best strikers in the league. But Theo Bear is my first striker. Let's get on to the last two. If you're looking for a striker, I bet I see I'd say Boya Bioski. Yes, that is my next striker. Boyan Bioski, the North Macedonian. And who else? Um, The fact that this guy, I think this guy's written off. I, I genuinely do. I think if you do not have this guy in your team this season, I don't know what you're on. Um, This guy, he's, beat, he's, he's carried Aberdeen, let's just say that. He's honestly, if this guy wasn't chipping in the goals this season... And what, he's got 25 goals in all competitions. If this guy was not chipping in the goals for Aberdeen, relegation. I, I will say that, four-handedly, relegation. And I'm I'm so I'm praying this guy stays. I actually am. He's almost played every single game for Aberdeen this season. Jimmy Thelen, please keep him. This guy is a beast. But he's already had offers from other teams. I would not be surprised if he does go. Especially to teams in England, Southampton, Leeds, Burnley. They were all linked with him. And rightly so, because he's been a brilliant player for Aberdeen this season. Probably, definitely the best. Like, Duke. Last season, Duke and Miofsky were just the main two. Duke fell off this season. And Miofsky's chipped in with the goals. He's been brilliant, and as an Aberdeen fan, I just, I can just, if he's watching this, probably not, just thank you for all the brilliant moments, especially at Hamden, he scored so many times at Hamden, almost his training ground. Somiowski, what a player, just what a player. If you do not have him in a, in your team this season, I don't know what you're thinking. Let's get on to the final player in my team. Ooh, and the final player in my SPFL team this season. It is pretty much one man and one man only. The SPFL player of the season, Lawrence Shankland. The heart man. 
Now, there's always been speculations between who is better, Miosky or Shankland. If we're talking next couple of years, Miosky. Right now, Shankland, you know. I don't know. I, comment down below. What are your thoughts on that? Miosky or Shankland? Because I don't know. Shankland, he's been unbelievable. Got himself a call up for the Scotland squad, provisional squad, for Euro 2024. Again, player of the season. He's got 30, 31 goals in all competitions. You know how ridiculous that is? As, as Miosky, if. Hearts do not have Shankland. They're in the bottom six. Simple as that. And it's it hurts me so much that Aberdeen had this guy. I don't want to talk about that. But Shankland's been so, so important to that Hearts team. Without him, they're done for. Absolutely done for. And probably worthy of his player of the se player of the year. Um, because he's been, he's just been good. He's been so good, and probably does deserve it. Let's be honest. And yeah, Shankland, last player, probably deserves to be player of the season. Thirty-one goals in forty-seven games is incredible. An absolute joke. Shankland, pff, rightly deserved. And that is the end of my SPFL team of the season. Again, this is just my opinion and my opinion only. Comment down below your opinion on my opinion. And comment down below your opinion in the comment section down below. I've got a lot of content coming up. I'm very, very busy. I've got reacted to my SPFL predictions coming up sometime this week. And then I've got Euro 2024 content coming for you guys before the 14th of June. Comment down below. What are your thoughts? What are your SPFL team this season? Add love, peace and joy. See you guys.